Thanks to our cell phones, public health officials could soon be on the trail of anyone who's been in contact with a person infected with the coronavirus. Our cover story is reported by David Pogue. When we talk about fighting the COVID-19 virus, we hear a lot about social distancing, self-isolation, and vaccines. What's weird is that you don't hear much about another incredibly important tool in fighting epidemics, contact tracing. It means detective work. When somebody tests positive, you ask for the names of anyone they've been in contact with recently. Well, contact tracing is really a fundamental part of managing infectious diseases that are contagious. Dr. Louise Ivers is a professor at Harvard Medical School and the director of the Center for Global Health at Massachusetts General Hospital. We try to find people who've been exposed to the illness, and then we give them instructions on what to do. Uh, That could be going to get a test. That could be self-isolating at home. We want to make sure that you don't inadvertently expose other people. Every day, I want you to write down who you've spent time with in person and where you've been. Rhode Island Governor Gina Raimondo has asked the entire population to keep a journal of the people and places they encounter. When you find out that you're positive, you should pull out your notebook and hand it over to the Department of Health so that they'll have accurate, up-to-date information. There's no nationwide tracking that's currently being done. And in Massachusetts, Governor Charlie Baker has hired a 1,000 contact tracers to interview people who've become infected. Partners in Health, a global health organization that ran a massive contact tracing effort in West Africa during the 2015 Ebola outbreak, is running the Massachusetts program. Everyone talks about flattening the curve, but we want to also shrink the curve, like shrink the total number of people that get sick. Dr. Joya Mukherjee is the chief medical officer of Partners in Health. She says that traditional contact tracing is more than just asking, who have you spent time with? It's also making sure you can handle being sick. So I say, Mr. Jones, you have the ability to quarantine. And he might say, "Uh, no, I am the prime breadwinner for this family. What am I going to do? Then we figure out, does he need unemployment insurance? Does he need food delivered to the house? That's all very cool, but we still have a big problem. You can't remember every single person you were near. Total strangers in the grocery store? Somebody behind you on the bus? The CEOs of Apple and Google released this joint logo. They are teaming up to create voluntary coronavirus tracing and tracking software. Well, if you've been watching the news, you know this next part. And then we came together and literally it was a mind meld. Dave Burke is the vice president of engineering for Android at Google. Almost too many people volunteering, everybody want, you know, can't find anyone who doesn't want to help with the pandemic. And Bud Tribble is the vice president of software at Apple. Two tech titans launching a rare collaboration. Not only is it historic that these two huge tech rivals are working together, it's also historic that they're appearing together on my screen and yours. The idea here that, that Google and Apple had, it wasn't new with us, was Could we use mobile phones to help public health agencies do a better job to amplify their efforts on contact tracing? And, you know, it's actually a credit to the academic institutions, both in the U.S. and in Europe and in Asia. There are a lot of researchers thinking through this problem. Okay, so what is this big project? It's a little technical, so let's take this slowly. You've heard of Bluetooth, right? It's a weak radio signal that lets your phone send music to wireless headphones or music to your car's stereo. Very soon, iPhones and Android phones will continuously broadcast a Bluetooth beacon, basically a big number that changes every few minutes, to any phones within about 15 feet. Meanwhile, of course, your phone is picking up the beacons from all other phones nearby. It remembers these interactions for 14 days. Now, here's the cool part. Suppose that a few days later, this guy tests positive for COVID-19. If he's willing, he can report his diagnosis in an app from a public health agency. At that point, everybody he's exposed in the last two weeks gets notified on their phones and advised to seek testing or quarantine. And to be clear, 
nobody has to participate if they don't want to. Is that right? It's under user control. They can turn it on or off. That is one of the principles that Google and Apple aligned on, like, you know, in the first five minutes, uh, maybe in the first five seconds. If somebody opts in, will their name ever be shared? No. Will their location ever be shared? No. Will the data collected ever be hackable or shared with the government or used for marketing? No. In fact, we've engineered the system so that the data doesn't go to a central place. Just know that you were close to somebody who was infected. That's it. South Korea and Singapore are doing digital tracing too, but far more invasively. They do link the infections to your identity. But MIT Internet Policy Professor Danny Weitzner says that the American approach, private and optional, will pay off. If we force people into this, they'll likely try to hide from it. And if everyone wraps their cell phone uh, in aluminum foil to try to prevent these signals from spreading around, um, then we would have failed. Google and Apple aren't writing the actual apps. Instead, they'll help state public health agencies create the apps, which should start arriving next month. One of the most amazing things about this collaboration is that it's Apple and Google. I mean, for many, many years, we thought of these two companies as smartphone arch rivals. It's very reassuring that we see the world the same way. Like we see the potential for smartphones to help people. This historic collaboration between Apple and Google does face a few challenges. Maybe not enough people will choose to turn it on. Or maybe you'll get a notification but you're actually fine, or vice versa. And if you are notified, what then? Millions of people still can't get tested or can't afford to self-isolate. But Dave Burke and Bud is, Tribble are optimistic. Um, this is just one action. And realistic. We have to take. It's not a panacea, it's not the silver bullet. We have to do many different things in order to beat this pandemic. And as Harvard's Louise Ivers says, we have to try. This is the biggest public health emergency of our lifetimes, and we need to be ambitious about how we're going to get out of this, because we cannot all stay home forever. 